Okay, so now we will take this example and apply it to our panels to create openings in our panels based on the location of these control points. Okay, so we have this example. It's going to work exactly the same way. We just need to uh, plug in um, pieces of our model and our geometry into the inputs. So here, instead of um, looking at the distance from these points, we're actually going to track the distance of these control points from each panel in our geometry. So if you remember from last week, uh, we had this area node, which was actually calculating the area of each panel. There it is. It's a little bit bigger. So this node was calculating the area of each panel, but a kind of nice byproduct of that node is that it also creates a point at the centroid of each panel. So we're going to use these centroid points to calculate the distances of each panel from those uh, points. Okay, so we have the distance component here. And we're going to take the centroid output. And we're going to plug that into the A input of the distance. Okay, so now those distances relate to our points. And the last thing we want to do is change these numbers from controlling the radius of these circles to control the size basically of our panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this as a scale factor and scale down our panels depending on that factor and that scale is going to relate to the distance of those panels from these points. So what I'll do here is I'll take this result number I'm going to create a scale component let's type in scale. So the scale component takes input as geometry center, so this is a center point that uses for scaling, and a scaling factor, right? So let's plug in our panels into the scale. So our panels were in this uh, surface four point node. So here's our original panels. I'm just going to drag this down for now. So we can work with it down here. So we have our original panels here. We're going to plug all those panels into the geometry. And by default, it's going to scale it around the origin by a factor of 0.5. So it's just going to decrease the scale by half. So now for our center points, uh, we're going to plug in our centroids. And our centroids were, again, in this area node. So we'll plug those centroids into that. And you can see now that each panel is being scaled by its center by 0.5. So now all our panels are scaled in half. And finally, as a factor, we're going to plug in our remapped values. Okay, so now these points are actually driving the size of our panels. All right, so now if we hide our original panels, you see now that the size of our panels are being driven by our points. Um, the scale here is a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to redo the scale of these sliders to something that makes more sense with my geometry. So I'm just going to take a look basically at the dimensions of my model. Uh, so it looks like the width goes anywhere up to like 50 by about 80 and then up about 80. So I'm just going to change these sliders around. Um, I also might want to change the minimums of these so I can actually go in the negative direction. So I'm just going to have the minimums match the maximum so I can go around the origin. And this way I can leave it zero because I never really want to go below ground. So again, these um, sliders, I have the x value going from negative 80 to 80, the y coordinate going from negative 50 to 50, and the z coordinate going from 0 to 80. All right, and once again, I can just copy and paste these points and uh, shift, hold shift and connect the points into my point node. Now I have these three points sort of independently controlling the size of my panels. I'm gonna hide this area so we can see better. Okay, at this point I can just erase the stuff from before. I don't need these circles anymore. I don't need these points anymore. Okay, so now we just have um, 
We just have our panels and we have these three points that are marked in X's, which are controlling the size of those panels. Okay, so now uh, that was a cool example of associated geometry. And what we've done basically is uh, set up a system where some fairly complex outcome, like the independent uh, scale of openings in our facade, it's controlled by only a few basic parameters. Okay, and this becomes very important uh, if we start to think about optimization of performance. We don't want to independently go through and scale each one of these windows by hand. Um, it would really help to have like a global system of control to where we can change just a few numbers and get feedback about how our system is performing. 